Hello, this is Mr. Buffington from Simplify Academy, and we are looking at the surface area of rectangular prisms in this lesson. We're going to talk a little bit about what surface area is, the parts of a rectangular prism, and then we're going to talk about a formula that might make our life a little bit easier, even though the formula may look complex. But let's go ahead and walk through it and see if you like the formula better or trying to figure out the parts separately. Let's do it. First off, surface area is when you think about painting a three-dimensional object. All right, so if we had this block here that's one centimeter by two centimeters by four centimeters, and you wanted to paint the entire outside of that block, that's what we're looking for with surface area. How much paint would it take to cover the outside of it? Or how much wrapping paper would it take to cover it? Um, those are the types of things when we're talking about surface area. If you look at the parts there are the front and back, which is here and here. I've labeled it with uh, those red rectangles. There's the top and bottom, which would be here. And like you can kind of see I'm filling in the top and, and the bottom. It's hard to see the bottom there. And then we've got the sides, which include this side that you can clearly see and the other side that is hidden. These are the, the faces of this three dimensional figure. It's basically six rectangles, if you think about it that way. This is six rectangles. So let me show you what this would look like if we were to take their, our original figure and fold it out from a three-dimensional form into a two-dimensional figure. That is called the net, and it would look something like this, right? You can kind of see that if this is the back, and that would be the top you can see there. We would have the front here. The bottom is, you can't see it on the three-dimensional figure, but you can see it there. And those four would fold up into being the top, front, bottom, and back. And then the sides would be there on the left and the right. Again, you've got four, or I'm sorry, you have six different rectangles that make up the surface area of this form. Do you see those rectangles? And that's all it is. Now, if you were asked to calculate the surface area, what you can do, and this is perfectly legitimate way to do it, is you can add up the areas of all of these rectangles. So first you'd have to calculate the area for all of the rectangles and then add them all up. So let's go ahead and label first off the lengths that we have here. We have uh, two centimeter, one centimeter by four centimeters. And we can calculate using those numbers the area of all of the six rectangles. Area for a rectangle is length times width. So let's start off with the rectangle at the very top there. It would be four times one, which gives us four square centimeters. That's the same as this one. Those are the front and back of that rectangular prism. Then we have the top and bottom, which would be four times two which is eight square centimeters there and there. Then we have the sides, which are two times one, which is two square centimeters there and two square centimeters there. So you can see that this here took us a little bit of time to get there, but we've found the area of each individual rectangle. Now we need to add up those areas. So four plus four plus eight plus eight plus two plus two. That will give us the total square surface area covering that entire rectangular prism. All right, now, all of this can be done every single time. It's absolutely okay to do this. However, there is a formula that helps to make things easier. And the reason why I showed you all that complex stuff is so that when you see this formula, you won't freak out. Take a deep breath because the formula is rather long. Here it is. The surface area is two times the width times the length plus two times the length times the height plus two times the height times the width. In other words, we could say it's two times the top, right? The width times the length would give us the top, right? The top and the bottom. So it's two times the top. So that's the surface area of the top and the bottom. 
two times the front, that's the surface area of the front and the back, and then two times the side, which is the surface area of the left and the right. So this is just kind of a colorful visual way of showing that. But again, there's the top, two of those. There's two of the fronts. You can kind of see I've, I've shown you there. There's two of the fronts and then there's two of the sides. And that is what this formula does. Now, you don't need to understand why it works. I was just trying to show it to you a little bit. But all you really need to do is to substitute width in for W, height in for H, and length in for L into that formula. And let me show you this formula in action. So if I've got the formula 2WL plus 2LH plus 2HW, I'm going to substitute in these values. 2, if you look at my rectangular prism, 2 is my width, 1 is my height, and 4 is my length. So this is what it looks like. And this is where it gets kind of, please don't be overwhelmed, but this is, it's a lot of numbers in there. But you'll see everywhere you had a W, I put in the number two, because that's the width. Everywhere you see an L for length, I put in the number four. And everywhere you see width or height, I'm sorry, I put in a one for H, height. And then you just simplify two times two times four is 16. 2 times 4 times 1 is 8, and 2 times 1 times 2 is 4. We do the multiplying first, then we add those three numbers together, and that gives you the surface area of this rectangular prism. Now, I want you to try practicing. So here's the formula. I want you to try it out with a new figure. There is your rectangular prism. I want you to try substituting and solving. Pause and practice. Give that one a try. Go. All right. Let's take a look. This is how I substituted. My width was 6, my length was 4, and my height is 9. So everywhere you see um, a W, I substituted 6. Everywhere you see an L, I substituted 4. And everywhere you see a height or an H, I substituted 9. Then I'm going to multiply the numbers first because we do all of our multiplying first, then we add together our numbers. 48 plus 72 plus 108 will give us 228, and it is square inches because it is an area, surface area, all right? And that is how we solve formulas, um, surface area of a rectangular prism. Now, if you're saying this is kind of complex, you're absolutely right. This is the most complicated formula that you will use at this level, the most complicated. I would say it's probably the most complicated formula for um, geometric figures all the way up to pre-algebra. This is probably the most complex formula that you're going to be working with for geometry. All right, let's look at um, word problems here. If I said Maggie wanted to paint a box that's 12 centimeters wide, 15 centimeters long, and 30 centimeters tall, how many square centimeters of paint will she need? This is a surface area problem. All right, so we're going to use the surface area formula. Fortunately, with this question, we're told wide, long, and tall. Wide is width, long is length, tall is height. So you just substitute 12 in everywhere you see a W. 15 where you see an L, and 30 where you see an H, and you get this. In our next step, we do all the multiplying. The, the addition there separates it, right? So I'm going to do 2 times 12 times 15. That will give me one number. 2 times 15 times 30, that will give me another number. And 2 times 30 times 12 will give me another number. Each of those numbers separated by addition and then I add them together and I get 1980, the year I was born. Yay! Um, I actually didn't even mean to do that when I was making this question, but it worked out pretty well. All right, that is square centimeters. So there we go. Now, there is another way to write this formula. So I wanna show you, this is a formula we've been working with. 
if there's like it it kind of simplifies it but it also adds in parentheses so if you want to take the common factor of two out of each of those parts that's fine you can pull the two out and then just substitute in width length length height and height width and this is a formula that sometimes is used the reason i'm showing you this is because both of these formulas are often given as the formula for surface area. So I want you to be prepared for whichever one you might see in your future. All right. Both of them work exactly the same way. Right. We have to substitute in width, length and height. This one here might be a little easier because there's less twos involved. Right. Um, so you, instead, we're multiplying three times seven, seven times five and five times three. We figure out, we add together those numbers, 21 plus 35 plus 15, and then we'll multiply that whole thing by 2. There we go, 71, and we multiply it times 2. We get 142 square feet. Remember, we are finding surface area, so it is going to be in a square. I want you to try out using this, um, this formula here just as additional practice using both formulas, just so that you're prepared no matter what comes. So if you have a length of four, a width of six, and a height of eight meters, use this surface area formula and try to figure out the surface area of this rectangular prism. Three, two, one, pause and practice, go. When you substituted those numbers in, you should get something that looks like this. We will now multiply. We're following the order of operations when we solve. So we multiply first. 6 times 4 is 24. 4 times 8 is 32. 8 times 6 is 48. Then we simplify what is inside the parentheses or grouping symbols to get 104. And now we're going to multiply 104 times 2 to get 208. This is square meters. So that's how we would solve this. Now that we've done both, you've used both formulas and you've practiced a little bit, I would try now to figure out which one did you like better, right? Both of them work. Both of them give you the correct answer. Both of them are perfectly fine. Um, but it's good to, while you practice, to pick out the one that you like best. So while you're doing the worksheet, you can go ahead and use whichever one you like, whichever one you feel is it makes more sense to you. Um, you can absolutely switch back and forth between using them. All right, let's do one more word problem. Kyer is wrapping a special gift for his friend Melna. It is four inches long, two inches wide, and five inches tall. How much wrapping paper will he need? Whenever you have a question like this, we are assuming that he is wrapping it exactly and not wasting any paper, right? Basically, we're asking a fancy way to ask for the surface area. So try this one out using that formula. Um, if you prefer the other formula, you can try it out using both. Pause the video, come back, and see the full solution. Welcome back. When I substituted, this is what that line would look like. 2 times 4 plus 4 times 5 plus 5 times 2. Now, I'm going to do the multiplying. 2 times 4 is 8. Five, 4 times 5 is 20, and 5 times 2 is 10. Then I simplify what is inside the parentheses and I will get 38. I multiply that whole thing times two to get 76 square inches. That's how much wrapping paper Kyer is going to need for a special gift for his friend Melna. A couple things to remember, there are two formulas. These two formulas do the same thing. It's completely up to you which one you use. This video is a little bit longer so I would show you how to use both. But again, pick the one that works for you and use that. And being familiar with both is probably a good thing because you may see either one used in your future. I hope that video was helpful for you. Make sure to practice using the worksheet. Good luck on the quiz and have a wonderful day.